Hey everyone, welcome to section 4.6. This is a little bit of a shorter section, so it shouldn't take us uh, too long to get through this. So we're going to be talking about the distance between points on a graph, and I kind of want to motivate this whole idea first. So I have this really simple exercise to begin. I just want you to plot the points on both of these graphs and draw a line between them to start. So you can pause the video and do that, then hit play when you're ready. So let's see. So I have over here, so here's 2, 4. Let's see if I can get my pen working. 2, 3, 4. There's 1. And then my other one, 2, negative 3. So 1, 2, 3. Okay, so I'm going to just connect these points here. Now we'll come back to that in a second. Now for the other one, I've got negative 2, negative 3. Right there. And then 1, 1 right here. Okay, so here's basically the, the start of this. Between these two sets of points, um, what can we determine the distance here? So, for instance, here in A, can I figure out the distance between this point and this point? And yes, I totally can, right? So I can just count. So starting here, I'll start here. So I go up 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7 points to get up here. So the distance between those two points is 7 units. Now, Looking at B, this is the next question. What is the distance here? Well, you can see just between this example and this one, this is not as straightforward, right? So um, it's you, you can't tell by looking at it. So because it's a diagonal, you can't just tell by looking at it. Now, what we're going to do instead is we're going to do this other exercise. So we're going to mark and count out the difference between the x part of the coordinate and the y part of the coordinate. So for the x part of the coordinate, why don't I use this purple color? And for the y part of the coordinate, actually I'll, I'll use a highlighter here to help us. So for the x part of the coordinate, I'll use the blue highlighter. For the y part, I'll use the yellow highlighter just to kind of help make sense of this. So coming up here, so counting between the x's, so I really go this distance to this distance. That's the difference between the x's. And then for the y's, oops, sorry about that. For the y's, I go this direction, right? Okay, so I just have to count those now. So for the blue highlighter, this is going 1, 2, 3 over, so this is 3. And then here for the yellow highlighter, so if I start here, I go up 1, 2, 3, 4. So I can just mark those distances now kind of underneath. So here's 3, here's 4. Now, taking a look at this, notice the shape that's actually formed by this. This looks like a right triangle, and so then you might remember some things like just about right triangles, and a lot of people at this point kind of bring up the Pythagorean theorem. And that's actually what would allow us to determine this distance, right? So I have one leg, I have another leg. So just by looking at this and seeing kind of the shape that's been formed by this, I can see I can use the Pythagorean theorem. And so that's actually what I want to do now. I've got one leg here, one leg here, and I can use this to figure out this part, which is the hypotenuse. So we will call this now C, and we can figure this out. So what shape was formed? So this is a right triangle. And so what we can do then is we can determine the hypotenuse. So what I can do is I can take my a squared plus b squared equals c squared, and I can basically just fill in those legs, right? So this becomes 3 squared plus 4 squared. This will equal c squared. So if I keep working this out, this is 9 plus 16 equals c squared. So this is 25 equals c squared. So if I take the square root, I get c equals the square root of 25, which will equal just 5. And so that would actually be the length then of that last distance. So what that means is we can actually use the Pythagorean theorem. The, the Pythagorean theorem actually is how we determine the distance in general between two points. So the Pythagorean theorem is a squared plus b squared equals c squared. So we want to think about this now in terms of kind of distance between points. So just like here. So here's my right triangle. So I've got a, b, and c. So if I'm trying to determine the distance between two points. So let's say that I've got maybe a point here, we'll call it P, and a point here Q. Then the distance um, between 
and P is found by solving for C. Now, the thing to keep in mind here is that P and Q, so these both represent points. So I could represent these as um, the points. So Q could be X1 comma Y1 and P could be X2 comma Y2. And then basically from this, I can figure out how to get to A and B. So A, the difference then between my two X coordinates, the, um, sorry, so B starting here, sorry, this is where I wanna start. So if I was looking at B, if I wanna figure out what is this distance here, B is really found by just taking X2 minus X1. And then A is really found by just taking Y2 minus Y1. So just noticing all of this, we're, we're like taking a right triangle and now we're just kind of translating it and, and redefining some of these letters using coordinates. This is one way you can think about the distance formula, but I've also written down the actual distance formula here. This is the other way. So this is the distance between two points, so x1, y1, x2, y2. You can use this formula, but all this is is really just an application of the Pythagorean theorem. So I bring this up because like I have the memory of a hamster. <laughs> That's always like the thing I say. I have the memory of a hamster. So I have trouble remembering this, but I can totally figure out something just by looking at the picture. And so if you have trouble remembering this, you can just remember like ultimately it comes back to you can draw a triangle kind of with the distance of those points, figure out those distances, and that, that's the way that you can do this. So I bring this up because there's really two ways you can find the distance between points. So what I want to do now is I just want to do this a, a few times and just have you practice this and, and you can play around with both formulas if you'd like. So let's start. Oops, let me grab the black color here. Let's start. Let's use the points, um, how about four, four, negative two. And the other point will be 10, six. So let's do this two different ways and you can kind of decide the way that works best for you. So if you are a visual person, you don't want to remember formulas. So you can always just mark these points. So let's see, three, four, so let me draw this whole thing out like this. So, and I can go this way. So I'm just gonna kind of sketch this out for myself. Okay, so I've got the point um, 10, six and four, negative two. So four, negative two is gonna be right here. 10, six, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, and then one, two, three, four, five, six, somewhere up here. So here would be my two points. So here's the distance that I want to figure out. So one way that you can do this then is you can really figure out what is this distance here, and then what is this distance here, and then you can use the Pythagorean theorem to do that. That totally works if you are like a totally visual person. Otherwise, what will get you to the same thing is you can use this formula where you take this x2 minus x1 and then y2 minus y1 squared. And this is really, the, they are one and the same. Totally doesn't matter which way you want to go with this. So if I just take a look at the difference between the x's, so if I want to use this formula, so if I take say 10 minus 4 squared and then 6 minus negative 2 squared, so if I work this out, I get 6 squared, I will ultimately get 6 squared plus 8 squared. And so if you look at this and then you compare that to if you're trying to use a, a graphical approach, so 6 is the distance between the x's and 8 is the dif difference between the y's. So it's literally the same thing. And so then what you would do here, right, so I'm just comparing the two approaches, I would take my 6 squared plus 8 squared, and that would equal my c squared. Here's my c. And then I would just take the square root. So c would equal this. And look at how the two formulas, they're literally the same approaches. So this will boil you down to the distance formula. So it totally doesn't matter which way you want to do this. And so then ultimately this will be 36 plus 64. So that's the square root of 100. So the distance between the two points is 10. 
So my C in this case equals 10. So whichever way you want to remember, this is totally up to you. So let me clear some space. Let's just try one more of these. So here are two more points for you. Um, so now you can pause the video here and try it either way that you want, um, and then hit play when you're ready to see the solution. So for my purposes, I'm just going to use the, the distance formula now. So I'm going to go ahead and take, um, how about 1 minus 5 squared and 8 minus 2 squared. And so if I work this out, I get negative 4 squared plus 6 squared. And so this will ultimately, ultimately become 16 plus 36. So this is really the square root of 52. So a lot of times, like, so this is not a perfect square, so you can't, you can't really evaluate this. This will be some decimal. So if you're in, if you're in my class, this answer is actually good enough if, if it's not a perfect square. So if it were a perfect square and it comes out to a whole number, I would want you to evaluate that. But um, I think sometimes with homework systems, like my math lab or whatever, they might actually want you to go all the way with this. So if that happens, so then you're just going to plug that into your calculator and you get um, 7.211 and it's just a repeating decimal so at some point you have to round. So um, th those are kind of the two approaches and so again you could have done this from that graphical standpoint totally doesn't matter whatever you want to do is is fine. Okay so like I said this is a shorter section so I just have one more problem here that I want to go through with you guys um, and just showing you a way that the uh, oops sorry the distance formula can actually be applied. So so let's read it out. The length of a shadow of a building is 10 meters. The distance from the top of the building to the tip of a uh, shadow is 26 meters. Find the height of the building and round your answer to the nearest tenth. So this is actually just an application of the distance formula in disguise. So I want to kind of draw this out. So you've got a building. So let's draw a building. There's my building and it's got a shadow. And so what it's talking about is so the length of the shadow of the building is 10 meters. So this part here, this is 10 meters. And then it says the distance from the top of the building to the tip of the shadow is 26 meters. So this is referring then top of the building to the tip of the shadow. This is 26 meters. And so now you can actually see how this, this applies to the distance formula, or well, really now it's the Pythagorean theorem. So the distance formula and the Pythagorean theorem, they, they're kind of like used interchangeably in some ways. So if I'm trying to figure out this distance here, now I really will just use the Pythagorean theorem. So I can consider this to be my C now, right? This would be my C. We'll call this, I don't know, we'll call this my B. And then we'll have this part here. This will be my A. So I can still use this a squared plus b squared equals c squared, and then I can figure this out. And if you want to pause here to figure it out, go for it. So I will have kind of everything plugged in looking like this. So then this is um, a squared plus 100 equals 676. And now I just kind of solve for the solve for this like usual. So I subtract off the 100. Now I get a squared equals 576. Now I gotta use my calculator here to figure out if that's a perfect square because I don't have that one memorized actually. So if I just plug that in, I will get that that equals 24 and that's 24 meters. So that would be how you would use that. So the distance formula can also come up in a couple different applications. So that's something just to look out for. So like I said, this was kind of a shorter lesson so that covers this one um, and I'll see you guys in another video.